widely educated, she qualified in chemistry and moved on to the specialized science of knowledge management, currently involved in projects ranging from promoting women in local governance to her involvement in waste management. She holds consultancies in various fields and has been published extensively. ETV Power Women proudly presents Dr. Sujatha Gamage. Hi, and welcome to ETV Power Women. Uh, now, you've heard the introduction to our next guest, um, so I'm just going to jump straight in and start talking to you. Uh, Dr. Sajatha Gamage, welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you here. I wanted to start off actually by asking you, because you're in a very interesting field at the moment, I wanted to know, how does one go from doing their PhD in chemistry to now doing knowledge management and working in local government? Right. Actually, my friends, my scientist friends call me a scientist gone bad. <laughs> okay. um, yes, I went from science to administration of science. Yeah. Then, uh, then you start looking at uh, this um, science resources. You know, I just look at studying scientists. Right. Uh, how many scientists? I was in the U.S. That's yes. how I got into that. I probably would have never made this journey if not if I did not go back to go to, go to the U.S. Uh, there it's, you know, the government is very keen to know how many scientists we have in a given time, yeah. what they're doing, how they're connected, and the government there is also very keen on, you know, I was in the state of Ohio in the U.S. Yeah. So there were opportunities to administer research. Right. Then from there, uh, then, you know, research is, now we define research more as knowledge, okay. you know, because to capture a broader uh, range of things. Yeah. So then you look to see where's knowledge, you know, how it's connected. It's uh -huh. really bringing all these parts exactly. Together. And uh, if I stayed here, I would have never, you know, gone that far in exactly. that direction. So we're very lucky that you went to the state. <laughs> I did, I did. I'm glad I made that change. Uh, so your friends, like you said, they call you a scientist gone bad. Is that purely because you're now in the administrative side of things as opposed That's to? Correct. Because scientists, you know, there's this saying, scientists should be on tap, not on top. So <laughs> what happens is, you know, a lot of people who are technical, yeah. they tend to stay in technical jobs. And those who go to the management are those with additional skills. Yeah. So, and then good scientists sometimes tend to stay being scientists. They don't get into the management side. So they, that's why they call the management people, you know, scientists <laughs> gone bad. So tell us a little bit about your job today, um, what it involves, um, and y what you do sort of on a day-to-day -day basis. Because it's, I mean, it just sounds fascinating. When I was reading about you, actually, I was like, I was just really quite fascinated. I mean, it's research, but there are different kinds of research. Yeah. Now, if you take your audience, you know, they probably know about market research. Right. Most, you know, young people, there are a lot of young people going into market research. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, companies that do market research as a BPO industry. Mm -hmm. But um, then there are those who do, you know, natural science research, um, discovery kind of thing, you know. What we do is more policy research. Right. You know, socially, we look for, we have the luxury of sort of sitting back and deciding, you know, what are the interesting questions? Okay. Um, um, you know, are there any, te we have telephone growth, but is yeah. it reaching the bottom of the pyramid? Okay. Those, those kind of questions. Yeah. And uh, fortunately for us, there are people who fund this kind of work. So <laughs> we get paid for things, you know, <laughs> we would do anyway. So um, right now my work is um, at LearnAsia. Yes. Uh, we do ICT, you know, we look to see how information communication technologies okay. uh, can be used to better, you know, make people standard of living better and so on. Wow. So I go beyond that and I say, you know, how can we make knowledge, yeah. um, use awesome. better use knowledge and so, uh, and I, you know, recently the field I picked is solid waste. Okay, yes, I was going to ask you about that because it just... <laughs> Actually, I thought of all kinds of 
sectors. Yeah. I was invited to write this proposal. Right. And, uh, you know, I could pick any sector. Yeah. I actually picked tourism. Okay. Then the economy was quite a guy in down, and yeah. you need a growth industry. Right. <laughs> Garbage <laughs> is growth. Definitely a growth <laughs> industry. industry. And um, also, it's interesting, you know, we have 330 local government bodies. And they right. are like, it's a very interesting organization. Yeah. And they are like, next to the president, yeah. the, the sort of uh, political authority with executive power is a mayor it's, of a city. Yeah, which is, okay. a, which is amazing. something that I didn't know until recently, actually. Yeah. I mean, we really, this is something I like to get across yeah. in this show, if I can. We really should pay more attention to uh, those institutions. And particularly, you know, central government is one monolithic entity. Yeah. So we have 330, you know, if you can't work with 10, there's 310, yeah. um, I mean 320. 20, yeah. mathematics. Um, so it's very interesting, I thought, you know, how can I make them more competitive and cooperative and sort mm -hmm. of make them perform better? So we try this sort of systems approach. Right. Um, so we work with a few. Uh, and develop several tools okay. and then you have to actually apply it uh, on a larger scale. So yeah. I'm now talking to various provinces, right. uh, Western Province Waste Management Authority, okay. uh, so that we can try out some of these tools that we have tested. Wow. So it's, uh, it's a fascinating work really. Yeah, it's and I mean, it must be very challenging as well having to work with all these different bodies and you know, try and get things streamlined and pushed through. Um, what's a sort of typical day in the office like for you? Do you have a typical day in the um, office? <laughs> yeah, it's actually, we do a lot of work just virtually. Yeah. We use Skype a lot. Yeah. I don't necessarily go to office all the time. Okay. And, uh, you know, we have a mobile, on the laptop, we have our mobile internet. Yeah. And uh, it's always exchanging ideas. It's, I don't know, you may have some of my office yes yeah um, it's about ideas but then we also write lots of uh, when we deal with mayors and others we write lots of letters also okay. so uh, then there's that part of this which is very much like a regular office yeah uh, but it's always we have uh, once a week we have group meetings research yeah. meetings where we brainstorm ideas uh, but it's continuously brainstorming yeah. and coming up with new ideas and that just must be a wonderful sort of uh, interaction with other people and just, you know, kind of coming up with all of these things. It must be really fulfilling. It is, um, it is. Yeah. What would you say is a favorite, your favorite part of your job? Favorite part of my job? <laughs> yes, you know, you go to these local authorities and you try to explain, you know, yeah. knowledge networks and how it relates to them. That's my favorite part yeah. because I really, I think, grew into it, you know, yeah. just convincing them like, you know, I would go and talk to these uh, public health inspectors. Yeah. And these are people who have, you know, after their A-levels, they go to their job, they right. go on to jobs. Yeah. And they do not go to university, not necessarily because they can't, yeah. but they did not get the opportunity. The opportunity. So there's this hunger for, you know, the recognition, knowledge, knowledge yeah. and um, for most, some of them. Yeah. Um, but, and then when you tell them, you know, what they know, because my research is about actually what I call mode two knowledge. I'm really okay. interested in, you know, we think in, you, knowledge is in universities yeah. and formal research institutes. Yeah. But with new technology, now it's, it's possible yeah. for all kinds of people. You know, you, you, you think you know something, you start a wiki, and all of a sudden everybody knows, you know, that yeah. you have something to offer. So now the challenge is, now we know if you take each local authority, there's some new knowledge there. They are doing something interesting. Yeah. So how do we, you know, in the universities, they know how to write these things, yeah. you know, formally. These people don't know they have it. It's distributed. Yeah. And they don't know how to, you know, Access put it together. It, yeah. So my research is about how do you get this mode two knowledge. Okay. Uh, somehow we don't need to formalize it. When you formalize, it's not mode yeah. two anymore. Yeah. Because as mode two is produced as you work, you produce now, right. Right? you know, even in say TV crew, you yeah. know, as they're working, you know, every day they're doing something new and improving yeah. on. And it's taking that. So it's re my really research is about how about these 330 local authorities? Yeah. How do we 
get the this little bits of knowledge how do you get them to share Across it the well some incredibly fascinating stuff um, so don't go anywhere we're going to be right back after this short break with a lot more from Dr. Sajatha Gamage. So we'll see you in a bit. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh, we have today with us an incredibly special guest, um, Dr. Sajatha Gamage, and we've been having a fascinating chat, actually, about the work that she's doing today. Um, Sajatha, I wanted to ask you, actually, how do you, I mean, do you find within your sort of profession as such and within local government, do you find that there are a lot of women sort of working in, in various roles within different authorities? Um, we can take the, let's see, the, the local government, there's this, you know, the political side and administrative side. Right. Administrative side, of course, there are a lot of women. Yeah. Um, but in, I'm more into the political side. Okay. And uh, there's only... You know, only two percent, one point eight percent really? of the councillors oh. are women. Wow! That's I was really... shocked when I heard that. Yeah, I yeah. actually thought it would be higher than higher. that. Right. Actually, interestingly, the provincial council level, it's I think three point eight percent, and it okay. goes close to six percent in the parliament level. But yeah. local government, you know, that's the institution closest to home. You know. Yeah. They do everything from prenatal care right. to crematoriums. Okay, you know, so yeah. from cradle, even before cradle <laughs> to death, and um, it's 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 really strange. Shockingly so, low. Yes. And I understand that one of the things that you're very interested in doing is is getting more women to sort of enter the institutions. Um, and how are you finding that? Do you find that women are quite receptive to coming into to local government, sort of? Actually, not under the present electoral system, right? Um, because because the proportional representation, we work with the larger unit. Yeah. Um, there's uh, you know, women or even men, they have to canvas in a large area. Right. So that means you need a lot more money, yeah. power, and then there's a lot of competition even within the party. So that environment is one factor. Yeah. I think that's probably a very strong factor. So, but even within the proportional representation system, if the party gives support to the women, uh, it's very hard to get your name into the list. Really? Impossible. Wow. Um, when people ask me, you know, how, where do we find these women? Yeah. You know, okay, we're asking for a quota. Right. Uh, because there's a new bill uh, in the works, and uh, within that we're asking for at least, we're not saying like in India that, you should reserve some of the seats for women. Yeah. In India, it's very interesting. Uh, if there are 10 seats, say three seats really? are reserved for women. So okay. women compete with women. So okay. you so make sure a, yeah. that. Um, but we are saying just at least candidacy, you know, yeah. candidates let's have 25% of candidates, make sure that they're women. When you say, you know, it's hard to find the women, what I, I jokingly tell them, if you're putting your not so competent son, uh. why don't you put your not so competent daughter? <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> Okay, so you know, not so you know, your brother in law, yeah. well, your sister, sister in law, absolutely. So it's not difficult, you know. Yeah. Initially, we we're looking for some women, yeah, you know, because I think when you have 25% women in a council or chamber, you know, there's 10 and there's uh, three are women, yeah, I think it's going to make a difference, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just not that, and if there's 20 and then there's that'll be, um. That'll be how many? Five. Yeah. Okay. Five women. And you know, that's that makes a difference. Yeah. Not that women are all saints. You know, yeah. some women they prove as, you know, can be as uh, violent and, you know, intimidating. But uh, I think overall, in general, biologically, you know, we are different and um, so I think it's going to have an effect. Yeah. It's important to have actually sort of representation. Right across the board. Shrata, I wanted to ask you, what sort of, what inspires you? Do you, what do you find inspiring? Um, I don't know. I think I'm, you know, I'm a curious person. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what, you know, it's, uh, 
it's terrible thing sometimes you're always trying to open things why what is this you know why is it not working i'm going to get to the bottom of right maybe you never grew up <laughs> <laughs> always playing puzzles you know always i think curious you know every day you wake up and you know um my children tease me you know i never cook the same thing twice okay so it's just always oh, really? experimenting always experimenting oh superb that's wonderful and you have like a sort of personal philosophy that you live by it sort of ethos or a... no, I think I feel privileged yeah. so uh then you feel like you know you need to do something yeah uh, you have for some reason you know you have all this uh, you've been given these opportunities so and my children are now out of the house so right. it's really actually uh, quite nice in a way <laughs> um I shouldn't say that when my daughter was going to university I I thought I would never never recover from you know when she left really it was hard to hard. Kind of... for a whole year I was fretting oh. and then she after she left yeah. actually I told her you know what it's not so bad <laughs> <laughs> so um uh. no I think it's um when I was in school yeah I was in the boarding school and uh, a uh, you know for the exam all level exam i remember we had the best teachers best yeah. labs everything uh. so you know i did very well i think maybe you know it's in the papers and everything the oh exam oh my goodness wow and then i got these letters lots of letters and one letter came and i wish i kept it yeah. and he just said you know what what you done is not that great at all <laughs> you know you know that you as you were shooting yes cats. okay you know look at you you got all these this thing this is yeah. how i go to school you know this is what i do right and it really you know, i was just a school girl but yeah. it's from somewhere in andhra pradesh somebody really a young a boy course, wrote yeah. to me yeah. somebody my age uh. it just uh, it really made a big impression at that time i didn't keep that i did not respond because i was in shock yeah you know it was very brutal letter uh, but uh, I, since that time i've always felt that you know yeah yes you know actually we are not doing enough for the uh, opportunities we get so tell us a little bit about your experiences um i know you went you started off at perdan university right and then you moved to the states did you do your phd in chemistry in the states as well or? yes i did yeah perdan it was really nice experience yeah um when i was in the columbus school in a boarding school so when it was time to choose a university yeah. i just put peradeni and peradeni only <laughs> to get as far away oh, as possible and yeah. it's beautiful it's a beautiful it's, campus it's actually so culturally it was really yeah. a wonderful experience it was i think still uh, some of the old peradeni was there um, some of the best dramas came through town we had mm. a film society wow. and you know all the european east european films were there uh, I really enjoyed it very much That and it was like a real eye opener for me you yeah. met so many people from uh, you know there's a lot of politics and yeah. it's very very interesting must have been uh, yeah must have been a fascinating place and then that was that, so that was in the 70s you know right. I went 72 to 76 okay. a long time ago yeah. uh, and then after that you went to the states and you did your um another yeah a degree yeah this is a phd and then i came back to university of colombo to teach yeah um i Did really you enjoy teaching loved it yeah. yeah i really loved it and i was quite settled you know to be a faculty member in the university of colombo right. but in two years um, we had to go okay i really was not happy about it yeah. but rohan actually was interesting thing the university here would not hire him he was offered a position in the states okay so um we uh, went to the states because of that and um you you have three children is that correct right. two daughters yeah. and a son yeah. and both your girls are in the states at the moment right. are they following in your footsteps studying the same things um, as you they would not like that word yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah please i always try to be careful if i like them to do something never to say about talk about it <laughs> actually my daughter is very at a very tender age you know yeah. i just asked her to do something and she looked at me straight in the eye and say amma are you trying to make me do things that you could not do yourself <laughs> very well then i realized i rohan must have said that to me i don't think she <laughs> because she's tiny and i was like take no, her no, back no, no, no. 
<laughs> and I've been really careful since <laughs> then. Right, well, we're going to take a little break, uh, but when we come back, I'm going to chat to you a bit more about your family. Um, so for all of you at home, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with lots more from the lovely Dr. Sujatha Gummigan. We'll see you soon.